Welcome back to Essentials Explained. Today we'll be diving into the Excel to walk through how to tactically utilize a sum ifs formula. If you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe, and otherwise, let's get into it. This video is sum if, count if, we are going to remove some of the stuff we did. I don't think we need this margin column anymore. I'm gonna remove this. I'm actually just gonna get rid of that sheet as well. So you can also delete sheets with right clicking to, instead of using the alt el shortcut. We don't need this concatenation column anymore. So I'm actually just gonna change this to a year column. So equals year will just give you the year of any date value. So if I just use equals year, I fill this down. You can see that we have 2022, we have 2021 where we need it. If I maybe zoom out, I can show you. This is just return the year for a specific date value. One other thing I want to have in here is what we call an LTM column. So LTM, you may also hear this called TTM for trailing 12 months. I'm just going to say LTM for last 12 months. Doesn't matter to me. What I want to know is, is this purchase or is this order happened within the last 12 months of today. So what's the latest data set we have August 31st. So what I'm going to do is just go into my lookups and then I'm going to keep these together and maybe I'll just call these um, date filters. And if I'm clever, I'll just copy this format across. And so, ooh, that was pretty easy. Um, LTM, what is our last date in our range? We know that it is 2022-0831. So I could just write that in there and, and that would work. Or what I could also do is I could use a max formula. I want the max date in my range. So if I go back to my working data, I select my date column and I hit enter, it'll give me the same thing. It'll give me the latest date in my range because Excel stores these numbers is serial numbers. So if I paste this as value, this is 44804. And so if I, you know, let's say I subtract 365, now it's 44,439. But if I change this to a date format, it's August 31st, 21. And so this is how Excel works with dates. It uses serial numbers that it disguises as dates so that you can easily understand them. And if we want to go back and let's say we want to remove 365 days from our latest date in our file, what we can do is we can say equals if our date is greater than our LTM date, I'm going to lock that in place and subtract 365. I want it to say LTM and if not, I want it to be blank. So I fill that all the way down and let's look at the bottom of our data. So it all says LTM, if I go up, that looks to be working correctly. And then maybe we can see when it stops. So it stops uh, right at the break point, right at August to September of 2021. So it seems to be working correctly. If I go back to my output, what I want to do is I'm actually going to steal this formatting because I'm lazy and I want to use as much of my hard work in the previous video that I already did. So I'm just going to call this some ifs output. I will just delete all this information. And if you want to delete everything, alt H E A will delete it all for you. So we have these groups. Let's say I want to use alt A U U. We'll ungroup them. You can see we still have hidden rows here. So what I'm actually just going to do is resize these rows. Alt H O H will pull up your row height. 13 five is pretty typical I've found and is pretty much what you want to use. Let's start with our product. What I could easily do is say, red paint, blue paint, and fill these in. But let's assume we don't actually know as much about our data set. I can also come over here and I can select this column. I can go back and I can just paste in the values. So control V, V will paste values. And what I want to do is remove duplicates. I just want the unique values for my criteria. Alt A M will remove your duplicates. I'll just hit tab to scroll over to OK. Hit OK, and now I just have the unique values in my table. For my annual, let's say I want 2020 and I want 2021 and 2022. Uh, let's say I want to fix this column width. I can actually just copy, paste special W. We'll paste column widths. Pretty quick way to do that. And now let's start writing our sum ifs. So what I want is a sum ifs, and let's just do revenue to start. So what's my sum range? My sum range will be my revenue column. 
So I'll select this column. I will use F4 to lock it in place. And now I want my criteria range. What is my first criteria range? I am going to use my paint color. So I'll select my paint color column, F4 to lock that in place. And now I need my criteria. My criteria will be my red paint. But what I want is I want this to stay in its column, but I want it to be able to move rows. So I want to make sure I have an absolute reference in my column where I have a relative reference in my rows. So we've built our first set of criteria. Let's say we want to also make sure this is only 2020, not all of the sum of red paint. I first need my criteria range. So I go back to my Excel and I'm gonna use this nifty little year column we built, lock that in place, and then go back to my sum if output and select the year. Again, I want to make sure this is relative when it comes to the column because I want it to be able to move across columns and then absolute when it comes to the rows because I don't want it to move rows. I hit enter. I can drag this over. I can drag this down. Let's say I want to do like a little total and some. I can pretty quickly do a quick check just to make sure this is working correctly. I want to say let's just make sure this is equal to my last output i can easily see if this is working right this doesn't work because this doesn't exist but if i wanted to say this is equal to the output of my year to date i can see that this is working what if instead of looking at this partial year we wanted to look at our ltm column how would we update this what we need to do is change our criteria and so I'm going to change this to say LTM. And now this doesn't work because we're trying to look up on our year column, a value of LTM that doesn't exist. So what we need to change is the cell reference that says N3 to N1218, because instead of looking at our year column in cell N3 through the end, we want to look on our LTM column, which is in column O. What I can do is I could either go in here and I could change these manually and I could say, let's just make sure this is an O and that will work and that will be great. Or what I could also do is I could also go in here and I could actually just change this myself by selecting the new range I want. So I could select this, I could delete it, and then I could scroll to my working data and I could select this range. I could use F4 to lock it in place and then fill that down. Both of those will work. Personal preference on what you like more. This is broken, but we'll fix that later. So now this is not annual. Let's just call this revenue. And let's say we want to actually look at quantity as well. What I'm going to do is I'll just paste something in here. Oops, I wanted quantity. And now you can see this is just looking up the same exact thing. I've just copied my table and all the references are working correctly. The problem is, is I actually want to change this from summing on column E, which is our revenue column, to summing on column C, which is our quantity column. If I want to change this reference, the easiest way I have found to do this is with a find and replace. So Excel has this control F, which will help you find anything, and then it also has a Control H, which will help you replace anything. So if you use a dollar sign in front of your range address, it will make sure it's only looking for this dollar sign E, where if you had an E maybe in one of your sheet names or in your formula name, that would also be replaced if you just did, I'm going to change E to C, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of my E. I'm going to put a dollar front in front of my C. I'm going to make sure I have this selected, and then I'm just going to hit replace all. All of these were replaced and now they are correctly summing on column C for my quantity. Last thing we want to do, maybe we want to look at price as well. So if I select this, I can drag it over and I want to call this maybe average selling price or yeah, ASP to make it easy. This is obviously the easiest column we're going to build. It is revenue divided by quantity. I'm going to select this. I'm going to paste formulas, control V F. And then I actually want, maybe I'm just going to make this a currency so I can see exactly the price of each one of my different products. So pretty basic intro on some ifs. What I'm going to show now is let's say we want to update this check because 
it's probably not best practice to be on a different table. What we probably want to do is query on our source data. I'll show one more example of a sum ifs. So sum ifs on our working data, on revenue, copy this down, lock it in place. What's my criteria range? It is my year. I'm going to select my year. I'll lock that in place and then go back to my sum ifs and select the year. And then what I want to do is say equals this total up here. I can drag it across. You can see true, true. This is still false because it is not looking up the right section, right? This is trying to sum LTM, which is zero, which is not equal. I'll fix that in a second. Let's say I copy this. I go back. I want to set up a check here. I have pretty much what I want. But again, I need to change this from summing revenue to summing quantity. So if I use my find and replace, just as I did, control H, this will actually keep my preset. So what I just did, so I just tab, tab, replace all, and now everything seems to be working correctly. Great. The last thing we need to do, update our LTM section. So I'm going to use the find and replace again. I love these. I think they're really helpful. If you want to change this, so let's say I do control H, I pull open this menu, and now I want to change this from dollar sign N to dollar sign O. What I can do is toggle through this menu pretty quickly. So either you use tab or shift tab will let you go backwards. So what I want to find is I want to find dollar sign N and I want to find dollar sign and I want to replace it with dollar sign O. Tab tab, replace all. It's all and then it will update all the formula ranges in your formula. One very, very important thing to understand, and I'll show this right here, is anytime you want to change a cell or use a find and replace, even for a single cell, make sure you highlight a specific selection. So if I just click on this and do control H and hit replace all, it will change all of the formulas in my worksheet because Excel thinks, well, if, if you're just referring to a specific cell, you probably want to look at the whole worksheet. But if I select maybe these three columns and use control H, it's just going to replace the cells in your selection. So if you're trying to do it even for one cell, make sure you select an additional cell. Otherwise, it's going to do it for your whole workbook. Last thing, I'm just going to make this italics. I think that looks nice. If you're interested in understanding how to utilize the sum is formula in combination with a named range, please check out the next video in our series linked here. Otherwise, thank you for joining us at Essentials Explained, and please comment any questions or feedback below.